the phrase is everything old is new again and in this case the very old is colchicine and it's just new all over it has been for a couple of years now some very exciting data that has been presented at uh, ESC and I'm here in Barcelona with Dr. Philip Nguyen and you are talking about colchicine for post-operative pericardial effusion it's this is the post-operative pericardial effusion POPE 2 study now we're starting here with post-operative pericardial effusion. Put it in some context for us. What's the issue that we're dealing with? Yeah, thank you. Uh, after uh, cardiac surgery, concerning pericardium, what we fear is cardiac tamponade. Right. Cardiac tamponade is a very brutal, life-threatening complication. And if we follow patients after cardiac surgery, we can really divide the evolution in two phases. The, the first phase represents the first post-operative week. During this period, most patients have a pericardial effusion and a few of them, about 1%, will develop cardiac tamponade. But as the patient is still hospitalized in cardiac surgery, it's quite uh, easy to diagnose and to treat to perform a pericardial drainage. But afterwards, after the end of this first post-operative week, patients are no, more, uh, no longer hospitalized in cardiac surgery. They are at home or they are in a cardiac rehabilitation center. And this is when they are less well followed up. Okay? So we decided to focus on this second period after the seventh post-operative day. And during this period, patients can develop two very different pericardial diseases. So there is a PPS, post pericardiotomy syndrome, and this PPS is a post-injury syndrome. This is a, a cousin of the Dressler syndrome after the myocardial infection. This is pericarditis. So the patients have chest pain, fever, friction rub, but a very small or no effusion, and therefore a very small risk of cardiac tamponade developing, about 2%. So in my opinion, it's, it's a quite rare syndrome, but not very interest, interesting because not very severe. And there are the effusions, what we call POPs, post-operative pericardial effusions. And uh, patients are asymptomatic because if you have a pericardial effusion and you are symptomatic, it means that you are a tamponade. So by definition, these patients are asymptomatic. But as they can have a moderate, medium-sized or large effusion, then there is a high risk of cardiac tamponade developing, about 10% within, within 14 days. So it's quite a, a tricky condition, asymptomatic but risky patient. And this is why we decided to focus on these effusions. Now, how many patients did you look at and what did you find? So we had to screen more than uh, 8,000 consecutive patients at about uh, day 16 after surgery. Among them, 252 had uh, moderate to large pericardial effusion, grade two to four. We excluded for various reasons 55 of them. And finally, we included 197 patients at high risk of cardiac tamponade after surgery. And they were randomized to receive colchicine or placebo for 14 days. Uh, usual dose of colchicine, one milligram per day. We found that uh, colchicine in this setting is uh, actually completely useless. Um, we uh, evaluated semi-quantitatively the pericardial effusions volume at the beginning and at the end of the study in each group. And the, the size of the volume of the pericardial effusion decreased in the two groups, but very similarly in the two groups. Uh, uh, with a P equal to 0.23. The number of tamponades within the 14 days duration of the study was strictly the same in the two groups, P equal to 0.80. Uh, the number of patients with atrial fibrillation was the same in the two groups at the end of the study. The size of the effusion expressed uh, with different uh, methods of evaluation did, well, didn't change with consciousness. And even 
if we studied our pre-specified subgroups, for instance, we were very interested in studying patients with a high CRP level because they have an inflammatory syndrome. And ascolchicine is an anti-inflammatory, it could be useful. Even when we looked at this uh, pre-specified subgroup, colchicine was not effective. Now, because colchicine has had so many studies done very recently, what's the role of colchicine? Uh, colchicine, actually colchicine is a very potent drug in treating pericarditis. Uh, several studies have been published in very famous uh, medical journals and very well uh, performed studies. These studies are uh, demonstrating, in my opinion without any doubt, that as an add-on in association with aspirin or an, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, colchicine uh, helps to treat an acute pericarditis and helps to, helps to prevent a recurrence because it's a quite a big problem in acute pericarditis, the, the recurrence. But in the POPE2 study, we were not in this setting. We were treating pericardial effusions, which is actually different of pericarditis. Very much so. So do you think that it's just the difference in the disorder that caused it to not work? This is what I that? think. The disease is different. Uh, five years ago, we published um, a similar study, POPE1, right. which was uh, evaluating NSAIDs in this setting, and we showed that NSAIDs are useless too. So uh, if I can give a take-home message, right. if, if you are um, a medical cardiologist and you are facing a patient after cardiac surgery, this patient is asymptomatic. He's at home seven days, 14 days, four weeks after cardiac surgery, and you discover a pericardial effusion, moderate, medium-sized, even large, but which is not which is not compressive, what should you do? This is a question. My answer, uh, the, the answer given by the POPE2 study is monitor him closely because there is a high risk of cardiac tamponade developing and this is a brutal complication, but you don't have to give any drug for that because no drug has proven any effectiveness in this setting. So are you going to continue doing any uh, work in this area? Of course, uh, I would like to perform a Pope 3 study, uh, which would be, uh, I would like to know what, what as are these uh, effusion made of. So I would like to have a, a, an accurate um, anal analysis of the content of these effusions uh, day by day if, if a patient has a pericardial drainage at day two, at day five, at day 20, is it the same effusion? or not? Is it an hemorrhagic or is it an inflammatory effusion? Well, congratulations on the, on the work. I know it's hard, whether it's positive or negative, and uh, we have all kinds of material to talk about at the ESC meeting. So in the September issue of CardioSource World News, you'll find uh, this information and a lot more from Barcelona. I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor, CardioSource World News.